Okay, here's our writing lesson for today, 4.3. Today is the read. We're finally going to get to read the focal text or the main story that goes along with our imaginative narrative, which is a, with, the, with the imaginative story that we're going to write. So the story is called Aunt Isabel Tells a Good One. Yesterday we talked about tells a good what? What do you guys think she's going to tell? A, a good story. And Aunt Isabel is going to tell the good story. We talked about how the story might be a, a made up made up or not real because the characters in the story are what? Mouse. They're mice and they're talking mice and mice don't really talk in real life. Also, mice are wearing what? Clothes. And do mice wear clothes? Yeah. No. Let's go ahead and start reading the story. Aunt Isabel tells a good one. Kate Duke. Oh no. To Sydney. Tell me a story, said Penelope one night after supper. What kind of a story? asked Aunt Isabel. A good story, said Penelope. All right, said Aunt Isabel. A good story is the hardest kind to tell, though. We must put it together carefully, with just the right ingredients. Let's start by giving it a when and a where. When does this story begin? Long, long ago, said Penelope. And where does it begin? asked Aunt Isabel. Think of a place where exciting things can happen. Okay, good. Those are all things that are important to a good story. All right, you ready? A cave, said Penelope. Long, long ago, whispered Aunt Isabel, there was a deep, dark cave in a gloomy forest where nobody lived except creatures who loved night and darkness and hid from the light. That's too scary, squeaked Penelope. We'll put something cheerful in our story, too, then, said Aunt Isabel. Think of a who. Who shall be in this story? How about a handsome prince named Augustus, who lives on a sunny hill high above the gloomy forest? In a big castle, Penelope added. Certainly in a castle, with his mother and father, the king and queen, Aunt Isabel agreed. Prince Augustus is as kind as he is good-looking. He likes to have picnics in the garden and is always happy to share his sandwiches. I like this prince, said Penelope. Me too, said Aunt Isabel. Now let's add someone else, someone talented and charming. Shall we name this darling animal Penelope? Why did why was she thinking of calling her Penelope? Because that's her name, right? Okay, how do you know this is the beginning of the story? What did they say in the beginning? They said long, long ago, right? Why does Aunt Isabel want to add the who to the story? So there can be characters. Who does Aunt Isabel decide to include? Penelope, very good, Penelope. Let's keep reading. Lady Penelope, said Penelope. Lady Nell for short, said Aunt Isabel. Where does she come from? Nobody knows. She travels about wherever she likes and has learned many secrets and clever ways from the creatures she has met. She can fiddle like a cricket, sing like a dove, and wiggle her ears as well as any jackrabbit. Best of all, she has four pet fireflies that she can juggle like spinning gold stars. What information do we learn about Lady Neal? 
Why do you think the author includes the information? What should, what do we know about Lady Neil? That she okay, that she travels and she likes. Go ahead. Okay, good. She can communicate with animals. Very good. All right, let's keep reading. One day, her travels take her by the castle. Prince Augustus hears her singing. What a beautiful voice, he thinks. He offers her a sandwich. What a generous heart, she thinks. Pretty soon, guess what happens? They fall in love, Penelope exclaimed. Exactly. So now our story has romance in it, too said Aunt Isabel. This story is coming out nice, Penelope said. All right, you ready? Too much niceness can be dull, though, said Aunt Isabel. We'll add a problem. Listen. The king looks out from the castle and growls, Who is that raggedy girl? A dreadful creature, sniffs the queen. Can you imagine? She wiggles her ears. Most unladylike. Not the sort of animal we want our prince to know, thunders the king. Be gone with her. And with that, they send Lady Nell away and forbid Augustus ever to speak to her again. Isn't that sad? asked Aunt Isabel. I think we should leave that problem part out grumbled Penelope. Why does Penelope want to leave it out? It makes the story sad. Do you think she liked the sad story? No, yeah, about her too. Very good. All right, let's keep going. But now there's a problem in the story. Now the pro story is more interesting, right? Doesn't doesn't it make a story interesting when you have a problem? It does. If if it was La La Land and everything was perfect, the story would be kind of boring. The problem in the story always makes it interesting. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Just wait till you hear what happens next, said Aunt Isabel, because now we put villains into this story. <gasps> Alone and sad, Augustus sits in the garden, weeping onto his sandwiches. Night comes, and still he weeps. Finally, the queen goes out to scold him for being foolish. But he's gone. On the garden seat lies a note. It says, The prince has been snatched. Give up the throne if you want him back. Signed, Odious Mole and Bad Egg Bat. Oh, Who wrote that? Very good. They signed it on the bottom. Odious Mole and Bad Egg Bat. They wrote the letter. Uh-oh, let's see what's going to happen. Oh, how the queen weeps. Oh, how the king wails. And oh, what panic there is in the kingdom! Odious mole and bad egg bat! Those bullies who lurk in the dark, plotting their mischief, are on the rampage. The townsfolk pack their things and rush to escape. The king and queen wring their paws, wondering what to do. Point at, uh, this is the plot where the author introduces one or more problems. It is also the middle of the story. Why do you think the plot needs problems? Why do we need... Good, to make it more interesting. And there is another problem now. What is the other problem? The first problem is that the king doesn't want his prince to marry the raggedy girl. And what's the second problem, Leia? Very good. That they kidnap the prince has been snatched. That they kidnap the prince. Who kidnapped the prince? Odious mole and bad egg bat. Very good. Odious mole and the bad egg bat. Let's keep going. But when Lady Nell hears the news, she doesn't run away. She doesn't waste time with Paul ringing. She leaves her camping out place sneaks back to the castle garden and finds a clue. A trail of sandwich crumbs leads away from the castle and into the gloomy forest at the bottom of the hill. Uh-oh, 
more scary stuff cried penelope so penelope thinks this part is very good what is the action on this page now there's action in the story what's the action on this page no but what does lady nell do does she sit there and start twiddling her thumbs what did very good she's doing something now there's action uh how does this part of the plot make the story exciting and interesting why does it make it interesting or scary or exciting because what what could happen to her she could get kidnapped too she's basically walking into danger right yeah why is she walking into danger to try to help save the prince very good her love all right let's listen to the rest <laughs> A little danger is good for a story, said Aunt Isabel. Lady Nell follows the trail farther and farther into the forest. At last she comes to the mouth of the deep, dark cave. Should she go inside? No, squeaked Penelope. Well, someone's got to save the prince, argued Aunt Isabel. So... Lady Nell marches in. There are shadows all around. The cave twists and winds. She turns a corner and sees Prince Augustus, all tied up. Nelly, he shouts. Augie, she cries, and leaps to help him. Suddenly a voice snarls. Not so fast, my little friends. And out rushes odious Mole. With a sneer, he reaches toward them with his long, sharp claws. Oh, no, cried Penelope. What are they going to do? <laughs> Quick as a flash, Aunt Isabel replied. Lady Nell calls her fireflies and begins to juggle. She juggles, cried Penelope. Why? Because... You remember, she has traveled far and wide, answered Aunt Isabel, and she has learned the secrets of creatures who hide in the darkness of caves. What is the secret of creatures who hide in the darkness of caves? Does anyone know? Good job, Bernaya. They don't like the light. That's why they stay or they hide in a dark place. Very good. So up go the fireflies, and they spin and sparkle and light up the cave like bright gold stars. Spades and shovels, yelps Odious. My eyes, my eyes, the lights hurt my eyes. Get them away from me. Run, Augustus, cries Lady Nell. After them, bad egg, snarls Odious. Down from the ceiling swoops Bad Egg Bat, squealing. Hee hee hee, you can't stop a bat with your puny fireflies. I'll eat them up. What a treat. Hee hee. Lady Nell and Augusta scurry into the shadows to hide. But Bad Egg screeches. Hee hee hee, a bat can find you in the dark. I can hear where you are. Run quietly, Augustus whispers Lady Nell, but their paws go skitter, skitter, skitter on the floor. Hee, I hear you, squeals Bad Egg. I'll get you now. What will Lady Nell do? Oh, no. What is she going to do? We don't know. Sing, Augustus, she cries, and they both start to sing as loudly as they can. Their voices echo and echo and echo through the cave. Soon it sounds like a hundred princes and Lady Nell's. What a racket! Now Bad Egg can't tell which voices are the real ones. He doesn't know which ones to follow. Varnes and Belfry, stop the noise! He screeches. Stop the noise! Around and around he flies, banging against the walls. Finally, he knocks himself on the head and falls down in a heap. Wow. Okay, why was singing in the cave a good idea? How does it solve the story's problem? 
Rena. Because there was a lot of noise. Why else? How did it solve the problem, JC? It hurts their ears. And they have sensitive ears and they cannot hear all those sounds. It hurts their ears when there's a lot of sounds. And when you're in a cave, your voice does what? Echo. It echoes. So then you hear your voice like a hundred times and you've only said it once, right? Because. Okay, let's keep going. Lady Nell and Prince Augustus dash out of the cave. They don't stop running until they are out of the forest and safely back at the castle on the hill. With shouts of joy, the king and queen rush to greet them. When Augustus tells them of Lady Nell's courage and cleverness, the king hugs her and the queen says, What fools we have been! My dear, you will always be welcome here. And Lady Nell wiggles her ears with delight. How is the problem related to Lady Nell solved? How is the problem solved, Rena? Rena, I mean, sorry, Amariah. Yeah. Very good. The parents are not worried anymore. Now they have their sweet Augustus, right? Yeah. Ew. Okay, let's see. The king and queen call the whole kingdom together for a celebration, and everyone dances until dawn, while the fireflies twirl and somersault overhead. All right, let's talk about the ending. Is, the, is that ending good? Is it happy? Yeah. It's a happy ending. What happens at the end of the story? Who can tell me what happens at the end of the story? They have a party because they found who? Augustus. The prince. Augustus is back and they're all very happy. Yay. As for Odious and Bad Egg, they slink back into the depths of the cave and stay there, not daring to come out, for they know no one will ever be afraid of them again. Is that the end? asked Penelope. Yeah. It's the happy ending every good story should have, Aunt Isabel replied. Do Prince Augustus and Lady Nell get married? asked Penelope. I wouldn't be surprised, would you? said Aunt Isabel. But first, Lady Nell becomes a famous musician. And first, Prince Augustus becomes a good and wise king. All that will have to wait, though, until we are ready to make up another good story. Oh, that's really good. Okay. And now, my dear Penelope, it's time for you to go to bed. Very good. That was a really good story. I like that story. Okay, so what we're going to do now, in your writing notebooks, that means the notebook that says writing on it, if you're online and you don't have a writing notebook, just take out a piece of paper. I want you to write down, if you think the story Aunt Isabel told a good one was a good story. And I want you to tell me why. You're going to tell me if you think the story was a good story, and then you're going to tell me why. Okay? I want you to basically tell me your favorite part of the story. You're going to do that in your writing notebook or on a piece of paper, and then I need you to turn that into me on the Google Classroom. Okay? If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys later.